Isaiah chapter 61 Second Peter the 61st book of the Bible and this passage of Isaiah shows up in the time of Jesus Christ what we're going to read in Isaiah is what Jesus read when he found the book of Isaiah and read it before the people in the temple the synagogue he says the Spirit of the Lord God now Jesus stood up and read this and said it's before and I'm not going to completely but this is fulfilled in your eyes before your eyes now to make sure we have what we're talking about here let's go to Luke chapter 4 The Gospel of Luke chapter 4. And let's pick ourselves up in verse 16. And let's read what we're going to read now. And what we're going to read is what Jesus read. But Jesus stopped at the point of the reading. And all the prophets look forward to Calvary. In Luke chapter 4, verse 14, 15. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth. This is his hometown. 15 tells us he was in the synagogues. 16 tells us he's home. Luke 4, 16. Where he had been brought up, and his custom was, he went on the sab, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, like they all to do, and stood up for to read. Now there are some churches which is very not wrong. We stand up to read the scriptures. They did it as, a, and what's going on here is when the, when the scriptures were read in the synagogue, they stood up to read. And it was delivered unto him, Jesus, the book of Isaiah. That's, there's your Greek for the day. E-S-A-I-A-S is Greek. Woo! -hoo. You learned something. You changed the E to an I, and you got from Hebrew to Greek. He -he. Now you can go say, I know the Hebrew and the Greek. I, Hebrew and Greek. Woo! -hoo. Yeah, that's how much is important in Hebrew and the Greek. And when he had opened the book, Isaiah's like, we're going to open the book. He found the place where it was written. Here we are. Now, they didn't have chapter and verse numbers. They, he didn't say, open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 61. There was no chapter 61. He was handed a scroll, a book, and this is where it came to be. Not by chance, but by God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Isaiah says, the Spirit of the Lord God. Why is God not in with Jesus reading? Because God is reading to them. Now that's a Jehovah Witness. <clears throat> you got to excuse me for my breathing and my... Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So it says gospel. Good tidings is the gospel. Poor and meek. He said poor is not just, you know, you're broke and you have no money. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to build up the brokenhearted. Build up and heal. To preach deliverance to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives. I'm reading to you Isaiah and Luke. And recovering the sight of the blind. And opening the prison to them that are bound. And to set, liber to set liberty to them that bruise. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Period. To preach the acceptable year of the of the Lord Isaiah has a comma he closed the book 
and he gave up to the minister, rabbi, and sat down. And all of them were, were in the synagogue, fastened their eyes on who does he think he is. And he began to say, this day is a scripture fulfilled in your ears. But he didn't fill, he didn't finish the scriptures. As so we go back to Isaiah 61. I gotta wet my lips, my throat. I apologize. The Spirit, there's the Holy Spirit, of the Lord, capital L O R D. God, Almighty God. And with Luke chapter 4, verse 16, you got the Trinity. God the, God the Spirit, God the Father, and God the Son reading it. And they're all going to get mad at Jesus for reading the scriptures. This is where Jesus is reading in Luke chapter 4. Because the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. There's the Trinity. Jehovah has anointed me. You know what anointed means? Anointed means Christ. Jesus Christ, the anointed of God, who is God, picks up Isaiah 61 and begins reading where we're reading. And Christ is the anointed one. The Antichrist is not the anointed one. Has anointed me to preach good tidings and gospel that's been put to Luke 4.16. Isaiah speaks about the good tidings of, of the feet that bury the good tidings. Paul says the gospel, the good news. John, as he, I think it's Second John, good tidings. That's the gospel. That's the good news. You're not going to get uh, the good news off the fake news of the media. The good news is not come to church. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Good tidings. Good news. And ain't come, ain't come to church. Preaching the good news is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures, was buried, and arose again the third day according to scripture. That's the good news. Nowhere do you find in Pauline epistles, nowhere do you find in the book of Acts, well, come to church. You come to church Sunday morning. You don't even find Paul using a Roman road. I know. Made a lot of you angry. Style is still alive. Style is getting healed. And God's using me. Unto the meat. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to pro li proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, locked up, in jail. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. All right, close your book. That's what Jesus did. Close your books. That's where that's where Jesus that's what Jesus closed the book. He says, Here you go, minister. And the people knew something wasn't right. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you hear me coughing. Jesus put a period where a comma is. Now that's just, you can't even change the periods of commas, semicolons. And since our study of Genesis to Isaiah now, 61, and we've gone through Genesis to Revelation, back to, to uh, Genesis to Isaiah now, and we have taught that that period, that comma, that colon, that semicolon, has been a period of time. And she conceived and bared a son. Wait a minute. 
No woman has sexual relations with her husband, gets pregnant, and then boom, the baby's born. Not that moment. That there is a period of time of a comma, a period of semicolon or colon of nine months. And what we're doing here is when we see what we're doing up to this comma in the middle of verse 2, we've seen the first advent. And Jesus changes that comma to a period, closes the book, sits down, and he doesn't read the second advent. Why doesn't he read the second advent? Because he knows Israel's not going to believe him. They know they're going to put him on a cross. They know they're going to stone Stephen. They know that Paul's going to say, listen, all right, I love you guys. I'm going to go to jail for you, but I'm going to Rome. I'm going to the Gentiles. And the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel is going to be put on the shelf where individual Jews can be saved. And the day of vengeance, second advent of our God to comfort all that mourn. What are all those that mourn? Have you not read in the book of Revelation the souls of them that be bent, beheaded for the word of God? Say, Lord, when are you going to put vengeance on us? Help us. Have you not crossed that reference to Revelation? And, and to the point God turns to them, Jesus turns to them, well, there's going to be a little more to have to die. Then you've lost that cough reference there. Of course, you do read the Old Testament, correct? Think about the deaths that are going to happen in the book of Acts because they don't believe the word of God. Stephen, all the apostles except for John, all those in the name and the word and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Think about the unnamed, unmentions of those that Paul did kill before his salvation. And yet there's one group of people crying out vengeance. A Christian doesn't cry out vengeance. We love our enemies. We're supposed to love our enemies. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, Jerusalem, never the church. Amazing that you got churches around Mount Zion. That has nothing to do with the church age. You're trying to bring in a kingdom with your Zion church, and they're all political churches. And stealing the stealing the, the blessing, stealing the kingdom, because God's all finished with Israel. No, he's not. When you name your church, your Baptist church, Zion, or temple, you're in a, oh, we're not under the law. Your church name is, your church title. Temple has nothing to do with the Christian. You're the body of the temple of the Lord. That's right. Not the building. You got you got temple Baptist churches and the body of the of the, the, of the Christians is just filthy and vile. And some of them may be Baptist Catholics. You're a Baptist church, but you got the Catholicism. To give unto him the beauty for ashes. What's the ashes? The destruction. They're being destroyed right now by Hamas. And it's amazing. Hamas launches missiles and, and Jews are being killed. But uh, but a the nation of Israel launch, launches missiles and defense. Oh, they took down a building. Oh, Hamas children are being killed. What about the Jewish children? The other day, well, they took down a, a hotel where, where the media is. And, oh, the media didn't know there was Hamas. They don't even know the difference between Hamas and Israel in their news reportings. They're all anti-Semitism and for the Gentile nations. Wake up. The oil of joy for mourning. What's that oil of joy? That's the anointing of the priest and the King Jesus. 
and the garments of praise for the spirit of heaven, the, the royal priesthood of the garments of Aaron and his sons, and the garments of Jesus Christ. He's going to have to change his garments because his garments are rolled in blood, Revelation chapter 19. Heaviness, ashes, mourning. That's the nation of Israel at the end of the seven years of the tribulation period called Jacob's trouble. That they might be called trees of righteousness. That ain't today. Why trees of righteousness? Sir, the blind man, what do you see? Uh, I don't know. I think I see men as trees. Get the reference. Get the reference. Cross the reference. Dot your eyes. Get out of Hebrew. Get out of Greek. The English. Did you miss that? I see trees of righteousness. That man says, oh, I see men as trees. What men were that man seen that were trees? Hebrews, Israelites, Jewish people. But if you read the Americanism in the Bible that many of the churches and Christians do, well, he saw Americans. No, he didn't. <laughs> there was no Americans. That man that saw men as trees, were most likely 99% of them were Israelites, Jewish people. There's the reference that you didn't see. Because you want the, you want the Bible to read America. Well, the only stars and stripes there are is the stripes upon Jesus' back and the stars that represent the churches. You can't find guns in the Bible, I'm sorry. And your constitution allows freedom of all religions defiles what God says. But we'll keep reading. Uh, planting of the Lord. That, we've already read about that in Isaiah. God is going to take that Israel as a vine, Jesus Christ says. Now the Gentiles have been grafted into that vine, but that vine God's going to pick up back again. He's going to pick up, I think, Selapetra, and he's going to plant them in the land. Now, Joshua put them in the land, but he didn't plant them in the land. And when Joshua put them in the land, they didn't remove all the weeds, did they? Now, when God takes that vine, probably from Sarah Preacher, and Jesus carries them over in the land, he's going to take away the weeds, and he's going to plant them, and that land is their land. Not purple mountains to purple mountains and sea to Sinai Sea, from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. You see, you know, even that, we're going to claim the thing is, you know, we came over here and, and, and in Massachusetts Colony, they had the, the, the new city on the lights of the hill. You recognize that phrase? And then they were killing Christians called separatists because we believe the Bible. And then a bunch, a bunch of horny men, I'm going to say it, who wanted sexual relations of freedom to marry multiple women who were being tortured and being killed and being persecuted by the, hu the husbands of them. Why? Ventured out to Zion and Utah stealing the promises of Israel. Your pilgrims turned into that shining light of let's, okay, the Jews are all done and, and we're the people. The Congregational Church in America. And they persecuted like Paul persecuted. Oh, in the name of the Old Testament, of course. Problem with pastors today and preachers, they don't know the history. That he, God, might be glorified. You got it? You know what gets the glorification today? We got a great pastor. We got a great church. What a great group of church. What about God? Where is he in the equation? Let's all sing happy birthday to each other. What about the new birth? They shall be they shall build the old ways. Israel. And it means the Antichrist is going to do destruction in Jerusalem. Read it. 
and shall raise up the former desolations, the cities destroyed again, like when Ezra and Nehemiah came back. You got the second book of Ezra and Nehemiah. It's not like there's no second book of Ezra and Nehemiah. There will be. And when they come into land, this time not from Babylon, when they come back in the land, Jesus is going to lead them, not Ezra, not Nehemiah, not Joshua. You got, the, you got second X's playing out pretty soon. There's no second X's. Yeah, not yet. You imagine if we know what's going on in heaven, if I don't know if we do, but some things I know we're gonna know. But let's say we look we watch the entire seven year tribulation played out if we can know it. You know there's gonna be some Christians up in heaven. It's all gonna be they haven't read their Bible. And they're not going to recognize the plagues of Egypt. Well, that's not what I saw on TV. That's not because you didn't read your Bible. And I have heard preachers and pastors from books. Oh, yeah, you ought to watch that Hollywood movie. Wow. You know, one of those movies, they give you an intermission so you go use the popcorn and, and, and go to the bathroom. They shall raise up the former desolation, desolation of abomination. And they shall repair the waste cities. All the city, the Antichrist and the Gentiles. Desolations. Abomination, desolation, stand where you ought not to be. There's going to be all kinds of desolations of many generations. There's still way. Listen, there's, the Welling Wall is still there from the desolation of 70 AD. I guarantee there's probably still desolation from Ezra and Nehemiah from Babylon. I guarantee it. I don't think they did a hundred percent job. They did. They did, but not completely. But when Jesus Christ comes in. The strangers, that's Gentiles, all through Gentiles throughout the law, shall stand and feed your flocks. And look at that. We're going to feed your Israel's flocks. Who's the stranger? The ones that took care of them during the tribulation. That fed them, visited them, gave them medical attention. They and their children are going to take care of your flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen. That the only other place that shows up is in Jeremiah 14, 4. And your vine dressers. You know the law sets forth servants of strangers. And the law sets forth the servant of your strangers. Here they are. And the law will proclaim how you treat those strangers and how you treat them under Jesus Christ. They didn't do it right the first time. But they'll do the law right in the time of Jesus. But ye shall be named the capital P, priests of the Lord. Are they, they don't even know who the Levites are. Right now the church is the priest. You see where the Catholic Church stole that? You saw where uh, the, the, the other denominations, the other religions where they steal the priests, we're the priests, we're the priests. One day the nation of Israel is going to be the capital piece. And God said the children of Phinehas and the children of uh, um, Zadok. There they are all before Jesus Christ. That ain't Gentiles. That ain't America. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Now, where do you see? Where do you see? Aren't there men in the pulpits today? Aren't they called ministers? You've stolen that title from Israel. 
where I come from, New London, Connecticut, a lot of the black churches, they're called ministers. They're the political churches. They don't teach the gospel. They go in there and get whatever political party. Down here in Florida, you can go vote in these churches. I was shocked when I came down to Florida because up in Connecticut, they close the schools. You meet in the schools and vote. Down here, you meet churches and you vote. What happened to church and state? And the black churches down here in Florida are the political churches. They don't preach Jesus. They preach politicalness and, and blackness and all that. And you're allowed to go in those buildings and they have ministers. And they got the names of Zion. And they got Mount something in their names. Some are even called Mount Sinai. Don't you put me back under the law. There's even Bibles that come from Sinaiticus. Sinai, Sinaiticus. That's the law. Don't you call no man minister. And he's not worthy of that title. Of God. You see where they stole it from? It's word ministers of God. I had one preacher one time, you know, where he says, you know, touch not my anointing. And I'm like, wow. I thought you were a Christian, not Jewish. And that's how they get mad at me. Ye shall eat of the riches of the Gentiles. <laughs> There's a difference between the priests, the ministers, and Gentiles. You see the capital P, capital M, capital G? There's a, there's a difference. And in their glory shall ye boast yourself. In the glory of the Gentiles. What the Gentiles will do for you. Gentiles are going to serve the nation of Israel. You know, a lot of people hate Israel because they're God's people and they're given a particular land and they have to work under that Jew. A lot of your corporations in your business today are owned by Jews and they're hated for that. Well, <clears throat> the Jews still get to be in power in the millennium. They just won't do it with force or aggravation. They won't be allowed to, according to their law. For the shame, you shall have double. All the shame they've been gotten as the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God says, hey, I'll take care of you. For confusion... They shall rejoice in their portion. There have been loads of confusion. Abraham had a great confusion. He couldn't tell the difference between his wife and a servant woman. Isaac had a great confusion. He couldn't tell the difference between Esau and Jacob. Jacob had a great confusion. He couldn't tell the difference between uh, from Leah and Rachel. Reuben had a great conclusion. He couldn't tell the difference between, between his mom and his sleeping adulterous affair with Jacob's servant. Israel was in great confusion with Moses and Aaron and God leading them to the promised land. They had a great confusion when Jesus was here that they, oh, we saw Calvary. You didn't recognize who Jesus was. There was great confusion because if they knew he was the Messiah and they knew the scriptures, they would have gone up to Jesus before the garden and could see me say, listen, Jesus. Yes. Our scriptures tell you Calvary's coming. <laughs> we know about Calvary, Jesus. Yeah, okay. <laughs> The scholars are going to say that later on, but uh, let, let's go with the program. Well, it says, you know, the Passover land has to be killed, has to be recognized as a pure child, you know, no without, no spot. 
and no blemishes. Yes. Well, we recognize you as that lamb with no spot and no blemish. You're of God. You're God. Okay, yeah. Agree. We got to kill you. Yes, okay. You're the Messiah, but we got to kill you. Yeah, okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Of all the Passovers they celebrate, and there were some good Passovers during some of the reigns of the kings, okay? How many of those Passovers on three days and three nights came back to life? I don't know how to speak Hebrew, but let me let me put it into the English. Papa, yes, son, we killed the Passover lamb. Yes, we did. It's been three days and three nights. Yes, son. There it is again. Bo. Come on, they saw Calvary. They didn't even see the Passover lamb get resurrected three days and three nights. And you know how many lambs were sacrificed on the Passover night? You know how many lambs were sacrificed on the on the night with Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world? Oh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to the to the you know to Calvary and and three days later the women were bringing after the Sabbath they were bringing spices to anoint a dead body that they couldn't do three days later. Okay? They did not know who that was until he came up out of the grave. And even then, the women go running to the disciple. Oh, I see Jesus is alive. Oh, yeah. You. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. Let me stick my fingers in his hand and thrust my hand in his side. That's one disciple that heard the other ten say, we seen Jesus. And they all look forward to Calvary. Nonsense. Confusion. And their portion, therefore, with their land, their land, in their land. That's who people try to stow. That's what that's what the Hamas are trying to do today. They want the land that's not their land. You know, every time you hear the Palestine land, that's a lie. There's no Palestine land. It's Israel's land. The PLO, that's a lie. That's Israel's land. <laughs> they shall possess double. They're going to get more and above what is their land. PLO won't be there. Jordan won't be there. The Islamic nations won't be there. Any nation that curses the Jew in the tribulation period and throughout history, the KKK won't be there. Many of your black people, they're against the Jew. They won't be there. It won't be black lives matter. It'll be Jewish lives matter. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Uh, is that now? Do you think they're having joy right now with missiles flying over? I mean, I, I don't want to be crude because I respect, I pray, and I honor the Jewish people today. But they're not singing rock a baby tonight, put their baby to sleep. They're rocking in Jerusalem with missiles from Hamas. And then missiles going back from Israel to protect themselves. You say, Stalin, what, what would you do? I'd open up every single nuclear ballistic missile submarine today, all 24 missiles of those submarines, and open them up on Hamas after you go in and clean all the Jews out and protect them. I'd take all the Jews out from, from a 100-mile radius of Hamas, I'll give them, I'll say, Hamas, you launch one missile, you're going to get every single 24 missile from our submarine, conventional and nuclear. Launch, launch one missile. Oh, there's, boom! 
All right, send the bulldozers in, send the, the cat uh, construction equipment in there, go in there, clean it up. You're all done, fine. Israel, move in your land. But that ain't going to happen with a, with a Roman Catholic president in the White House. And that would not happen with a capitalistic landlord of New York, of the previous president. That would not happen with the Islamic tensions of the president before him. That would not happen with the, with the oil-hungry presidents before them. And it's sure not going to be the president of the world or the king of the world under the Antichrist. Which is to come. But you wait till the king of kings and the lord of lords come along. When God cleans that whole land up. You ain't going to see the footprints of Jesus. You ain't going to find the, the Catholic Bible traditional places. That's all going to be gone and wiped away. For, the, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I like that. And sometimes judgment is harsh. Sometimes judgment is cruel. Sometimes judgment is not what you're liking. I hate robbery. And God hates our government because they rob from you. No taxation without representation. Croc. You guys, all the American Revolution against England started over the, the tea in the Boston Harbor, right? We didn't want to be taxed on tea. You realize how much they tax you on now today? How the heck? Hey, listen, keep the tea on tax and then let us live how the British had us. Well, they're charging us with stamps and stuff like that. Well, a lot better than what the government's charging us with today. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. Oh, you mean when Jesus went in the temple and they were messing with the people and overcharging them for the birds and the lambs and all that? And then, you know, changing, exchanging the temple money for the for the Roman government because we don't like the, 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 the pictures of humans on our coins and you know they weren't getting a fair exchange? You mean that one? I always lose cap. I hope I don't knock it over. Forgive me. I will direct their work in truth. <laughs> so when Jesus Christ come in, who is he? He's the way, what? The truth. There's no lie. God is unable, cannot, will not ever lie. That's the standard of millennium. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. God is not ever, will not be ever finished with Israel. Don't you dare say he is. You're a liar. Their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. <laughs> They're known among Gentiles today. A bad concourse. Not in the millennium. Their offspring among the people. Their children. All that see them shall acknowledge them. You're a Jew, you're a Hebrew, you're God's people. No more Jewish jokes. They shall, and they are the seed which the Lord has blessed, made a, There it is. Not American. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God. That's Israel speaking. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation, righteousness of the saints. That's the garments. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Fine linen is the righteousness of saints. We're all going to have white linen. Problem is for the Christian, not all Christians are going to have a crown. Not all Christians are going to have gold or silver or precious stones. Now, I don't know how the gold, silver, and precious stone, I know a crown goes on the head. But not all Christians are going to have that adornment of gold, silver, and precious stone. Some are not going to have it at all. Some are not going to have any crowns. God is not going to give you a crown. Oh, well, you know, you're a Christian, I'll give you a crown. He ain't going to do that. They may do that in the high school sports and, and kiddie sports today, but God ain't going to do that. And if by chance, if we do cast our crowns at his feet, 
as the 24 elders do, there are going to be some Christian. I ain't got nothing to offer. And you're not going to get one just to, just to cast it. That's earned. As a bridegroom decketh herself with gar ornaments, gold, silver, and precious stones. Some of the bride will not have that. She's going to have just the gown. It's clean through the judgment seat of Christ, through the wood, hay, and stubble that's become ashes. She gets something clean. But she gets no adorning. As a bride adorneth herself, with her jewel. What if you didn't get the jewels? What if you, she's fixing herself up and she, she ain't got nothing? She ain't going to have it. That's plain and simple. And you're not going to borrow. And it's not going to be given to you. You got to earn it. There'll be some Christians in the millennium, they're not going to get a city to reign. My teaching on that is, and I, I can't be <clears throat> sure on this, and I can be wrong, but you may be put under another, you may be put under a Christian that gets a reign that you try to hamper that person's life. You weren't a blessing to him, you, you, you were a downfall, you were a discouragement. And would be that Jesus puts you under that Christian. You got witness, you do a street ministry, I let my light shine. You ought not to be doing that. That's not how Jesus done that. And imagine Jesus turned around, okay, that person that you knew that you didn't do nothing, he's under you, you're under him. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we need your prayers. I need your prayers. As for the earth, bring it forth her bud. The, the curse is removed. That's springtime. That's when the buds come out. As the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth. Spring, bud, garden, Eden. Or a type of Eden. Or a resembly of Eden. It would be funny if God brought Eden back. The second coming of Eden. I, I, I don't know, but. Imagine God putting Adam and Eve back in that garden and everything. They're sitting there like. This is what we could have had. Abel will be there. Eve, where's your son Cain? Where's all the descendants of Cain, Eve? So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations through the Jew. There are nations there. Remember, there are nations that come out of the millennium that help that Jew. I believe Naaman, the Syrian, the Syrian. I believe he's in heaven. I believe the the Pharaoh that was under Joseph. I believe he's in heaven. He helped that Jew. He helped the nation of Israel. God said, "I will bless them that bless you." I believe. Nebuchadnezzar got right with God. Belshazzar, no. I believe that Cyrus, even God said, you know that there are centurions in the, there was not one centurion in the Gospels that did not do right and listen to Jesus. What about that Syrophoenician woman that came to Jesus about her daughter? And these people and many others 
before Abraham are Gentiles that are not under the law. And they were not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ in the church age because they were before the church age. Before Calvary. And these people will be with the Jews, Abraham, Isaac, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Elijah, Elijah, Moses, Aaron, and all the Miriam, and all those will be all together in the millennium with the church saints. Now, Moses' own family is not all going to be there because his father in law said, I'm going back home. His father in law won't be there. As Christians, we'll have family members that are not all there. And you think Moses and Aaron are going to get a little more authority than others? Yes. Do you think that there will be people in the Old Testament that have a little more authority in obeying God than others? Yes. And there will be Men and women of the church age, they'll have a little more authority with gold, silver, precious stone, and those crowns, and then Christians that don't have them. And in the tribulation period, at the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus comes, those that help the Jews get to go into promised land, and those that curse the Jew go off into hell. We're going to see Adam and Eve and all the Old Testament saints and the gospel saints, and all the church age saints, and the tribulation saints, we're all going to be together in the millennium. And there's one nation above all the nations, that's the nation of Israel. And there's a group of people above all a group of people that's here. And then there is one king of kings, one lord of lords, that's Jesus Christ. We read about Christians being kings, we reign that there will be kings in the millennium, but there's one king. We learn about priests. There will be priests. But Jesus Christ is the great high priest. The office of Aaron is going to be done by Jesus. And he's the king. So all the people that don't like church and state won't like the millennium. And then when Jesus... In Luke chapter 4, he got up and read the passage that we just read. And he stopped and made a period where the comma was, hey, listen, the first advent, but there's more to follow. And when you read Luke chapter 4, they were ready to kill him right then and there. Looking for Calvary, were we? Let's go over there, Luke chapter 4. Let me show you. Looking for Calvary, were they? He read from Isaiah. As, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 is what we read in Isaiah. Luke 4, 21, this day the scriptures fulfilled in your ears. Okay? Now they're looking for Calvary. If you see on the screen, I know you can't see it live screen, but if you can see on the screen, Luke 4, 29. And rose up and thrust him out of the city where he was preaching and led him to the brow of the hill where the city was built, that they might cast him down. At, they were going to kill him. They were going to kill Jesus in Nazareth. Looking to Calvary, were we? Were we looking to Calvary? I don't think so. 